Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. And today we are going to complete another plastic surgery on my channel and my patient for the day will be this big 17 inch monster high doll. And I am really curious about trying to do such a big transformation on such a big doll because I am going to do it for the first time. So what are we going to do? First of all, I am going to change, of course, her skin color completely to something completely opposite that nobody will recognize her anymore. Then I am going to change her face, I am going to shape a little bit her cheeks, her nose, her lips, maybe the eyelids, we will see later. Then I'm going to shrink her head with the acetone and I'm really curious how it's gonna look on 17 inch doll because I've tried it just once on a smaller doll and it, it looked really impressive I would say so I'm curious about the big doll transformation and then I'm going to give her real glass eyes in one of my previous videos I did it for the very first time for a big doll head and it was just amazing, it's really so, some new market for me. I think I will experiment with such a real glass eye still for a very long time because it's really cool to make them from scratch. So today I'm going to do it for the very first time on a monster high doll. So and that's it, maybe something else will appear of course while I will working on her. And for now let's start the transformation, let's go! I told you already before that I really love working on big monster high dolls. They are probably my favorite doll kind to customize. But unfortunately it's quite difficult to find them here in Belgium, so I'm really happy I could find four of them lately. And before I start all the serious operations, the so-called plastic surgery, I need to get rid of her clothes, shoes and accessories. And then I'm going to cut her hair as short as I can. Then I use my hair dryer on the doll's head to make it soft to be able to remove it easily. And now it's time for the first serious manipulation. Let's shrink your head in pure acetone to make it smaller and more proportional looking. And I will take such a big glass jar for spaghetti or ice, something from the kitchen, because the head should have lots of free space, because it will become double as big in the beginning of this process. And I want to try also something weird. In some tutorials I've read that you can keep the doll's makeup on if you don't move it while it's in acetone. I'm pretty sure it was not true and of course, at week, as we can see, acetone removes all the paint instantly. So don't trust all the tutorials on the internet. So, and now I'm going to close the jar and I'm going to go to bed. And I will let the head soak in acetone for sure for 48 hours. And in the morning, just 8 hours later, I've seen such a shocking picture. Here should be such a music probably. The head became big like it was planned and it's also cracked in multiple places. Honestly, I don't know what to do. I don't know why and I don't know what to do, because this hat is just ruined. <sighs> I let it dry, of course, and the cracks and all kinds of deformations have become just worse. I took quite a long break and I thought about this doll for a really long time. And then, almost two months later, I've decided to make a completely new hat for this doll, just to sculpt it myself from scratch. It maybe sounds insane, but I told it already in the beginning of this video that I really like these kind of dolls and that it's quite difficult to find and they're also quite expensive. So let's take a chance, let's try to save this doll and let's try to give it another life. Let's, let's give it another chance, guys. I'm going to sculpt the new head around the neck anchor using air dry clay from the brand Darby. And I begin with making a basic head shape using a piece of foil. And the foil ball should be a little bit smaller than the head on the reference pictures. I have downloaded these pictures from internet to be able to follow the proportions and it's very important to have such a reference of a head shown from different angles. 
And when I'm happy with the size and the shape of the foil ball, I cover it around with clay. I will not show here the whole sculpting process in details with lots of tips and directions, because let's be honest, I'm doing it for the very first time in my life and I'm scared and nervous and stressed just like hell. And it feels like I need to climb a very high mountain ha having just some theoretical knowledge about like climbing mountains. There are lots of tutorials on the internet where people with lots of experience and practice show and explain everything. And what you will see here today is my story. A story about me trying to turn my theoretical knowledge of human anatomy into a sculpted 3D model hat. It took me three full working days just to sculpt the hat and the first night I went to bed completely depressed but then later things started to become a little bit better and more positive. Now I'm going to draw the main proportional lines and like this I can easily put eyes, nose and lips to their right places. I put two hard clay balls to the eye sockets and then I cover them with a thin layer of clay. And then I work for a very long time on her nose. I changed it probably four times, so I will not show all the five hours of nose job here. And then I'm working for hours on her lips.
Now let's open her eyes. I'm going to add some extra shape to her cheeks because now we've made just the bone structure of her face. And now I'm going to give her a pair of ears.
I let the head dry for a week and then I'm going to sand it slightly with nail buffers to remove all the smallest imperfections. With a precise cutting knife, I work on the smallest details of the face – the eyelids, the nostrils, the lips… I think your head is ready and I can start working on the body. I sand it to remove the glossy top from the surface, then I clean it with an acetone free nail polish remover and then I cover it with white primer to make the body as white as the head is. I apply three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant on top and then I can finally start drawing her face. First of all, I'm preparing soft pastels in basic colors. I will need a couple of taupe shades for drawing shadows, I will take light and also darker ones, then some pinkish and reddish colors, like for example my favorite Indian red and Caput Mortum colors, and then I will also need pink pastels for her cheeks and lips. And then I start blushing her face, creating a new skin tone. This project, guys, it's really special to me. First of all, it took me exactly three months to complete it. I've started with it on 11th of July. You still can see the old white background in the intro in the beginning. And I really feel like I've done much more than I thought I could do. And I felt very stressed and nervous during the whole process and I feel stressed even now while showing the process and soon the end result to you. Because with this art project I am seriously stepping out of my comfort zone. So today I am going to skip the Q&A part of the video and we will come back to it in my next video. And today I just want to let you see the doll, the whole process of creation. And you know, creating my own BGD doll is my dream actually, the most necessary step in my doll artist career. So today let's say it's the nice preparation for making my own brand doll in the future.
This time I cannot separate the head from the body, so I will start blushing her body already now, step by step. I take my watercolor pencils and first of all I draw the white of her eyes. Then I work more detailed on the eyelids. And then I start sketching the eyebrows. I constantly use Mr. Super Clear sealant to protect what I've already done. And then after every layer of sealant, I will add all the time more and more hairs to her eyebrows. Like this, they will look very natural in the end, and you shouldn't even try to make eyebrows perfect in one layer. Then I take a pencil that would match her natural lip color and I draw the lips. Then I draw the irises. I think I want to give her green eyes, ginger hair and freckles. I told you already lately I really love those with ginger hair, so this time I want to give her all my favorite features. Then I add some grey shadows to the white of her eyes. With the red pencil I draw the waterline of the eyes. And then add some more eyebrows and also some more details to her eyes. Then I take a very light pencil and I add all kinds of highlights to her face. And this step brings everything to life. It's just very important to blend the light pencil very good.
And meanwhile, I still keep working on her body all the time. Now I want to make freckles and for this I first mix a couple of shades of acrylics together, then I add water and then I spray the freckles on the doll's face and body using a hard synthetic brush. And then with Q-tips I remove some messy spots. I know that not all of you love freckles, but I really adore them and on dolls they look really amazing, because the doll faces immediately look much more real and their skin gets unbelievably realistic texture and dimension. But I still need to clean my studio after this, because right now even my camera stand and my lamp and my desk, everything just has freckles all over. With a very sharp black pencil, I draw tiny bottom eyelashes and I also add the eyeliner. Then I take white acrylic paint and put highlights to her eyes. Then I attach false lashes and add glossy varnish to her lips. And to her eyes I'm going to add such a gloss resin from Lisa Pavelka. I add a tiny drop to her eyes and then I cure it with an UV lamp. And now I'm going to make a wig for her using synthetic doll hair. And now let me show you really quickly how I've made an outfit for her, because this video is getting really long already now. So first I've made a very pretty and delicate blouse. Then I'm making a straight skirt using a piece of rib fabric. To make a pair of socks for her, I will take a new gloves and I will cut two fingers off. And 
using a piece of imitation leather, I'm making a little purse for her. And I will attach magnets like to a real bag to be able to close it. Now let's put everything together. I want her to look like a student girl. And to make this look more casual and realistic, I will add a pair of red sneakers to her very decent blouse and skirt, because this is how we all wear things nowadays. And in the very end, I still want to trim her lashes a little bit. And here is my doll. The most special, the most difficult to make, but also probably the most loved one on my channel. She feels almost like a real person to me, like a friend. And I also feel that making this doll has become also a huge step in my artist career. I literally jumped out of my comfort zone and strangely enough still stayed alive. Another thing that didn't break me, but probably made me stronger. And now I really want to hear your opinion on this whole situation. Today your thoughts and your likes are especially important to me because I'm asking for your opinion on a such a special doll that has almost become a part of me after the three months of working and thinking about her. So tell me what you think about all this and please hit the like button to let me know that all my huge work wasn't for nothing. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are not with us yet, because the next week I'm starting this series of Halloween specials. And for the very first time on my channel, you will see two doll repaints next week. One is gonna be on Friday like always, and another one, the most special one, on Sunday. And I really hope that you will not miss both of them. And I will see you already very soon in my new Dory Paint videos. Bye! Love you guys!